All right, project time. So what we're going to do is to explore our new blue foam skills, we're going to make one of these little trapdoor toys. So how this works is you go ahead and grab the string, and when you pull it, ah, the snake comes out and bites you. So awesome. OK, so uh, let's go ahead and make those. Um, bop. So this project is a little more uh, involved than the other ones. Uh, and basically, that's just because I've got a lot of stuff here. So you can see I've already made uh, some of the blue foam rectangles. I'm going to have to use patterns to cut those out. We'll get there in a second. I've got some studio tack back here. Uh, I've got a burnishing block, some double-sided tape. My patterns are over here, and they're all ready. Uh, I've got a string with a needle to help me thread it through. Uh, I've got some rubber cement, masking tape. I've got a block of pink foam for the snake. That kind of, uh, that's just styrofoam. It works a lot like uh, the blue foam we've been working with. And I've got my trapdoor top already made. So let's go ahead and start making it. The first thing that I'm going to do, you'll notice uh, of my three blocks that the middle one is slightly larger. So I'm actually going to take that one and work on that first. And that is these patterns right here. So I need to apply the patterns to the top and bottom of the foam. And I'm going to do that using the studio tack. So I've got my sheet of studio tack. I'm going to go ahead and open up and find out what side's the sticky side. If I can open it up, here we go. OK. So here's some stickiness right here. And what I'm going to do is just put my uh, patterns right where they can get some stickiness from the studio tack. And I need to make sure that I get the right spots. So that side's going to be sticky. I also want this side to be sticky. So I'll go ahead and position them the right way. And I'll lay that down. And then I'm just going to take my burnishing block and kind of rub the stickiness, stickiness right onto the patterns. All right, awesome. Take them out. And it's time to apply them to the foam blocks. Ooh, a little too sticky. OK, here's one. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick an edge and line up my patterns to that edge. Kind of get that settled on there. Where I want it to. And press it down. Then I'm going to take the other part of the pattern. And we're going to line that up against the same edge on the opposite side of the foam. OK. There's that studio jack out of the way. So I use this upper right edge. So I'm going to use that same edge on this side. And just go ahead and line this piece up. OK. Cutting time. So we're going to cut this by turning on the wire, hot wire. And we are just going to run the wire along the edge of the pattern. I'm going to go ahead and get started right there. OK. And I'm just letting the wire gently run against the patterns. So the wire is not affecting the paper, just cutting the foam away. And I'm paying attention to my speed, not too slow, not too fast. And we'll just work our way right around. Finish this inner profile right on up. Excellent. Got kind of a little egg glue left over, but we don't need that part. <coughs> and now we're just going to take care of that outer edge. And we'll just, whoop, got caught on the pattern. Run it right through the outside edge. Uh, 
All right, excellent. We got a little tail there. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. So that's all settled. Take the patterns off, and voila, our first edge is all done. <coughs> So I'm going to change it up a little bit for this next part, and that's because these two pieces are actually identical. So what we're going to want to do is cut them at the same time. Save ourselves a little bit of effort. And how I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to use a little bit of double-sided tape just to stick them together firmly enough. Now, I don't want to go too crazy. I just want them you know, reasonably stuck together. So I'm just going to use one piece right in the middle. Peel this off. All right, line these guys up. And then we have to do our studio check procedure again. Just to make sure I don't accidentally touch the hot wire, I'm going to turn it off for right now. And it's time to studio tack our next set of patterns, which are just these guys right here, pretty simple. And go ahead and push my pattern down. OK. So now I need to turn the hot wire back on. And go ahead and smoothly cut right around this pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and get on in there and just cut straight around. Excellent. Get rid of the scraps, hot wire off. Patterns off. OK, these are just held together with double-sided tape, so it's pretty easy to just pull them apart. And we'll get rid of the tape that's in between. Stick that somewhere else for now. Lego. OK. So next, what we want to do, uh, these three blue pieces are actually going to uh, be sandwiched together. And we're going to do that attachment with uh, rubber cement. So what I'm going to do now, we want to dry mount with rubber cement. So I'm going to go ahead and paint these edges, leave them aside until they dry and then come back to them. So here's how we want to assemble it. Kind of one, two, three. So I want to put rubber cement on that edge, that edge, and both of these edges. So let's get to it. Some rubber cement, kind of slubby. It's hard not to make a mess with this stuff. But I'm going to do my best. OK, that's painted one edge. Let's go ahead and paint this guy. Need a little bit more. All right, now I actually want both edges painted. So next I'm going to paint this side here. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and flip it around so it's a little easier for me to get to. A little bit more. Ooh, boy. That could have been worse. Hold your brush firmly in your dominant hand. OK, one last edge. All of this gooey stuff. So gooey. Need more.
Okay, now we'll set these aside to dry up before we mount them all together. All right, those are set aside. Okay. And now, while those are drying, what we're gonna do is cut out our little snake. So I already mounted the patterns on, save a little bit of time. And you'll notice that I lined up some of the features on the edges just so that I can ensure that the patterns are kind of lined up top to bottom. So we're going to put the hot wire on and go ahead and just trace these edges. Now I'm trying not to stay in one spot for too long. This pink foam kind of cuts relatively fast, so we're just sliding along the edge. Right. And now the inside edge. Okay, excellent. Okay, there's our little sneaky. Get these patterns out of the way. And what I want to do next is uh, go ahead and give this snake the string it needs. So what I've got assembled here is just a large needle, some yarn, and then a washer on the back just to hold uh, the string in place. So it's important to turn off the hot wire so you don't get cut. <laughs> it's also important to insert the yarn from the uh, bottom of the snake. And that kind of makes everything work out so that it actually comes up out of the trap door and uh, gives you a bite. So we'll slide that in down here, right about there. Can you see that? Right about there is where we're going to poke it right through. And there's our yarn. Awesome. So now we're going to assemble these guys together. And they kind of go like this. One, two, and three. All right. Let's give them a good press. Make sure they're nice and lined up. All right. There we go. And now uh, we're going to want to poke the th string through this front edge. And that will allow us to uh, pull that part and get the snake biting. That's the next thing to assemble. We can go ahead and give that a try. Perfect. The last finishing touch is to, well, I can't remove that right now, um, put on the trap door. So I've got a nice blue trap door assembled here. And for now, I'm just going to fix it with masking tape. If you had a little more time, you could use something like rubber cement, and that would work. Uh, okay, you just have to make sure that you have enough uh, bend in the trap door so that we can actually make a hinge. But for now, let's just make a hinge out of some masking tape. Get the right length. And so I'm just going to apply some masking tape right back here. And that way the trap door flips up and lets the snake bite out the front. All right, let's give it a try. Go ahead and pull it. Ah! <laughs> okay, so there you have it. There's your little trapdoor snake toy. Uh, as always, I encourage you to feel free to modify the design, make it more fun, put some googly eyes on your snake or anything like that. 
Uh, if you were worried about some of these edges, you could take some sandpaper to them and smooth it all out. But I hope that you uh, had the chance to use your new blue foam skills to make a fun toy.